Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's fall, so grab your favorite pumpkin spice latte or whatever beverage you want, and let's sit back and talk about some of the new enhancements coming in the job service for Mass. So I've put a little thought into this, and one of the things that you know Drew, one of the co-founders of Mass Transit, has asked about is he's like, you know, I want to get away from courts, and one of the ways I want to get away from it is I need recurring job support. So I spent a little bit of time thinking about this. I put a couple days into coding, and I'm, what I'm going to show you now is Mass Transit with uh, the job service having the ability to schedule recurring jobs. So I have a job running right now, and we can see that uh, this is my console output. And you can see that every minute at the top of the hour, I'm doing some regularly scheduled maintenance, which right now is just a task.delay, but you know, it's, it's maintenance nonetheless. Um, but this is scheduled and it's always in there. It is a job, it works just like a job consumer. So it is a job consumer and it's kicked off based on a regular schedule. In this case, uh, I've specified a cron expression of zero stars. So every time the number of seconds is zero, it's gonna kick it off. And just like anything else, it's not gonna be absolutely right on time, but it's gonna be shortly after that. You can see we started at 1300, 1400, and then at 1501, we were a second late. Hey, it's a scheduler. It's not gonna be right on every time. So, so how did I do this? Um, so first I'm gonna kind of take you through a little bit of the sample. So this is the regular job consumer sample, but I've created a branch on it called recurring for now because until this is in the main packages, I don't want people getting confused. Um, this sample uses uh, EF core for the job service sagas. And I've also converted this sample to use the SQL transport. So the SQL transport supports Postgres and SQL Server, and it's free to use, there's no license required. So I figured I would change this sample over, and now what I have is an application that runs entirely just using Postgres. And because it's using the SQL transport, I don't have another dependency. So I don't need RabbitMQ or Azure Service Bus or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of cool. I get my connection string from the app settings, I set that in the SQL transport options and I'm off and running. I set up the migration hosted service because I have admin to my database. So I'm gonna create all the, all the tables and everything required by the SQL transport. I have my DB context, so I'm gonna apply my migrations and I have this migration hosted service which just applies the migrations to the database if they haven't been applied at every startup. So again, your database is always gonna be refreshed. Now with the SQL transport, there's a couple of cool things. So there's add SQL message scheduler. Because the database transport has smarts and it knows how to schedule and unschedule messages, it has its own schedule. So normally you would use the delayed message scheduler to use the transport or use ports. With the SQL transport, scheduling is built in. It's a native capability. So you don't have to rely on a third party scheduler or any plugins. So you just add SQL message scheduler there and down here we say use SQL message scheduler. So that's the only wiring required to set up the scheduler. Um, just like the sample had before, I've got a convert video job consumer. I've got some other consumers that observe some events. And then I wanna get into the job service configuration. So I have this set job service consumer options. I'm not setting any options right now, but I could, there's options in there. The most important part is I'm adding these Saga state machines and you know, I wanna keep my jobs around when they finish, so you know, whatever. With the SQL transport, because it supports partitioned delivery with, of messages in order, I wanna take advantage of that so that I don't get any current currency conflicts on my sagas. Everything is gonna be clean and based on that job ID. So I'm gonna call this add Java saga state machines, which is required. And then I'm gonna say set partition receive mode. And what that's going to do is it's gonna go in and set up the receive endpoint for the job saga state machines such that they will receive in partitioned order. And this is kind of a cool little feature because it turns out that when you register a saga consumer or when a, a saga consumer or anything, I've added the ability to add a configure endpoint callback for that endpoint, or in this case, the endpoints of the job saga. So you're able to add configuration to any endpoint through the add consumer now. So that's kind of a cool feature. I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, then I'm gonna configure EF core. I'm telling it to use my existing job context and use Postgres dialect. So everything's great there. Um, 
I'm going to use the kebab case endpoint name formatter. Again, I have this SQL message scheduler. Another thing I'm doing in here is I'm configuring the use job saga partition key formatter. And that's giving me the partitioned, every message in the saga has a partition key provider so that it can do that partition, you know, pull out that partition key, which is the job ID or job attempt ID. And then for those endpoints, use that partition key to partition all the messages through those for the job saga. So kind of really taking advantage of that and it's, it works out really well. Um, the rest of this is fairly boilerplate. I'm setting up the host options. Um, I'm adding a hosted service here for my recurring job configuration service. And this is where the new recurring job stuff comes in. So as I, you can see in here, I create a scope and I get a publish endpoint because I need one of those. And there's this new extension method on publish endpoint or the request client that will say add or update recurring job. And in this case, I'm gonna give it the name of the job. For me, I'm just using my consumer name and it's gonna generate a, a job ID based on that uh, name as well as type of message that I'm processing. So the perform regularly scheduled maintenance is the message type. In this case, it's empty. It doesn't need anything. It's just triggering this job consumer. And then I'm specifying a cron expression. This needs to be a six place. I think it needs to be a zero with six, five stars or, you know, any of the formats are supported like slash 10, slash five, all of that stuff works for the most part. If one breaks, we'll figure it out, but it's all in there. Um, and all this is gonna do is it's gonna submit the job to the job services with this additional scheduling information, such as the cron expression and the message sent. And then it's gonna just add it like a regular job. It's gonna send it and we're gonna see that it's continuing to run. It's running every minute, every minute at the top of the minute. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, again, it just kind of works. It's pretty simple. I can't think of how to make it easier. You just add or update recurring job. If you do update it, if you update the schedule, you update the message that's being sent, um, it will determine if the next start time has changed. And if so, it will reschedule it. Uh, if you update the job, like the body of the message, it will update that. And then the next time the job runs, it will get that new message body. So it kind of just works as you would expect. Now, it would be interesting to look at some of the new extension methods I've created as well. So previously you had to like do publish and job and all that other stuff. I thought, why don't I have extension methods for this? So I created a submit job extension method, which you can use the request client called submit job and it will initialize a job ID and return that for you when the extension method returns. I also added another kind of one shot perspective of I want to be able to schedule a job. So I want to be able to say, hey, I want this job to be submitted, but I don't want it to run for 10 seconds, or I don't want it to run for five minutes. I want it to run later. So I wanted the ability to just say, hey, I want to schedule, submit a job, and I want to give it a start time. Like, I don't need it right now, but I just need it done eventually. So now I can schedule that too as kind of a one-shot schedule. So when we go in and look at these, we should be able to see them running. So like, let's say, you know, right now I think the post just does it immediately. So if I just do an abc.move, I think I'll see it in here. Yeah, and you can see immediately I'm sending the job and it's converting the video and it's gonna finish right away. Now, if I go in here and do the put, which I've added the delay to, um, movie.mp4. Now, if I run that one and I go out here, you can see I have the sending job and it converted the video abc.movie. That was the one that I started earlier but I've sent the job movie mp 4 but it hasn't started yet. Now it started 10 seconds later from the time it was submitted. So you can see that that gives me the ability to submit a job and schedule it such that it doesn't start immediately. So that's kind of another cool feature. So just some cute little extension methods there. Um, some nice, you know, quality of life updates. And there's that scheduled job going off again, because again, it's just managed the jobs. And because because the job, and here's the nice thing, is if you scale out the job consumer to 30 instances, because that scheduled job has its own unique job ID, it's always only ever going to run one at a time. And you can specify the retries for it, so you can specify in the job consumer with the job options, the retries, like I wanna retry three times and then fail. And then once it fails, it will just schedule itself back up to run at the next scheduled time. So. Some pretty cool options there. You know, I kind of dig it. I think it's neat. There's probably some edge cases I haven't covered yet, but out of the box, it seems to be doing what it needs to do. So that's the new job scheduling features. I'll have links to the code at the bottom, including the branch of the sample that has that. But 
you know, something cool, something useful. Give me some feedback, add some comments below or hit us up on the Discord if you have any, you know, comments or questions about it. And hey, we'll catch you on the next one. Enjoy.